Need for Speed Unbound didn't get amazing feedback and reviews when it originally dropped. It's been a year and a half since its release, so let's check out what's changed in 2024. We'll also be checking out some mods later on that drastically wow. improve this game, so stay tuned. So the first thing that I noticed in this game is the 200 global player ranks that have been added with the most recent update, which is Volume 6. As you can see, I'm rank 8. I won't go too hard on this because of the... Oh. Jesus, I won't go too hard on this because of the fact that they've just added it. It pretty much is just a very basic progression system that gives you like some XP, some cash, yada yada. But there is most definitely room for more additions throughout the ranks, like more unlocks throughout the ranks, for example. Maybe some paints and some smoke effects, possibly like a brand new car every 50 ranks and then a super special one at 200. The ranks aren't a bad addition, of course. It does give you something extra to grind. You get like some titles or some calling cars, some banner that you can put on like your name and stuff so speaking of things to grind for unfortunately one of the biggest additions to this game is the speed pass now you can tell i've been very much so out of the loop with this game because i lost interest in it before volume 3 and that's when they added the speed pass so the speed pass is pretty much just like every other online game that has you know a battle pass system that's exactly what it is there's 75 ranks 45 of them are free it's actually not anything special to what we've seen before and then of course you have the premium wow. speed pass that costs like 15 nzd probably like 8 usd or something like that you skip the queue gives you extra tiers in the battle pass or the oh my i'm 83 percent oh my oh my god i just absolutely threw that so heavily i'm climbing to them so quickly bro Shit. i was also given this mclaren wow. as a reward for playing heat but on top of that, I was also supposed to get 250k cash in my bank, and I don't see 250k cash. What the f*** EA? But yeah, anyway, the premium speed pass, just like I said, it gives you probably like 25 extra tiers, it gives you a handful of cars at the beginning, and that's it. And it is kind of sad that that's the biggest news and updates I have to give you guys for what content this game's got. There is more, but that's pretty much as, as good as it gets. I'm f coming for you, Shimizu, you rap f I had so much trouble with you when I first played this game. Ah. So speaking of unlocking cars and the premium speed pass, Need for Speed has repartnered with Audi, and those new cars is the, or are the Audi S5 Sportback, the R8, oh fucking hell, I have to look at my monitor, the R8 Coupe and the RS6 Avant. It's on the official artwork for this game as well, as along with the R8, so the whole Audi repartner is definitely pushed for this season. Now apparently there's supposed to be 25 new race events across a to s plus tiers when i scroll through the map here i'm just seeing all the races that i've always done anyway and i got really bored of that to be honest like i'm just going to quickly throw it in here i've got 66 hours played on this game like where are these race events that i'm supposed to that that's supposed to be new i was trying to talk about those 25 new races but i can't even showcase them because i don't know where they are and besides some dedicated pvp that was added for online which i don't really feel like Oh god. I don't feel like that's worth talking about to be honest. It's just like, okay, cool. That's pretty much it for Unbound and the positive things that have come out of this game since a year and a half since its release. It is a little bit disappointing and a little bit like beer bones. Damn, I hit that shit considering the drifting in this game. Sheesh. Now I know that Unbound got a lot of criticism and kind of got shed on for the driving effects, the smoke effects and all that type of stuff. And when I first saw it, I'm going to be completely honest, I was quite excited for it. I thought it was pretty cool, but I do understand what people are talking about. And it is a little bit of like a kiddish aesthetic. The whole game just doesn't really feel too much like a Need for Speed in my personal opinion, especially if you compare it to something as even recent as Heat. And then obviously, oh for f**k's sake, no, 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 Shmuzu, piss off, piss off, piss off. Ooh, did I win? Did I win? Oh, oh my god. Dude, even comparing this game to something obviously like the goats of the franchise, you know, most wanted, Carbon underground it just doesn't have that gritty need for speed feel but i suppose not every need for speed has to be like that so i don't know now the next point that i want to put a lot of emphasis on and something that this game received a lot of criticism for is the drifting now the first thing that i want to touch up on first and foremost is that this game is absolute horse 
for drifting at low speeds. It is so hard to actually get around these corners. I did hit it off there, but it's because I was going downhill with it. If you're going uphill and trying to drift at low speeds, it is absolutely terrible, which doesn't create a good experience for the start of the game. That's the first problem I ran into, not being able to drift because my car was so fucking slow. And it is especially terrible for a perfect example right here where there's corner after corner after corner and you don't actually have any like gaps to gain speed and actually hit a drift. And I've purposely got a slower car out of my collection to showcase this, especially uphill. Now in terms of the drifting itself, it's fairly smooth, all right? It's a fairly, it's fairly smooth to drift in this game. As you can see, I'm pulling off an average drift right there, right? It's nothing special, nothing crazy. There's something about the drifting in this game that just feels kind of stiff. It's smooth, like you can drift right, compared to many other games that I've played that you can drift in, there's something about it that just feels clunky, that's the perfect word, clunky, it feels clunky, and I don't know how to explain it or why it's clunky, but that's the way it feels to me. Now it says a lot as well when there's literally mods for this game that improve the drifting, and I'm going to move on to that where I'm going to compare the mod to the actual in-game, like drifting mechanics, to show you guys the difference. Now ladies and gentlemen, this is exactly how drifting should look in Need for Speed Unbound. The fact that I can even hold a drift this well at 70 kilometers when I struggle to do it at 140 just goes to show how much improvement this mod has actually made to the drifting in this game. Like, I could realistically hold this drift forever. I will never get out of this. So yeah, what I really appreciate about this mod the most is how unbelievably smooth it is to actually transition into these drifts. Now, as you can see, there is a little bit of practice to be had with the handling of this of this mod. It is not it's not hard, but it's just very, very different to what I'm used to, so I'm still trying to get there. I also do have the drift camera mod enabled as well, so that's why I have like a different camera angle. When you play the game, right, I feel like this is an if you know you know sort of thing. You have to like initiate the drift yourself. You have to make the car drift instead of it just kind of transitioning into the drift itself. But look at me, I'm gliding, bro. And what is just so confusing to me is how well a community mod is able to improve the game versus the devs struggling to do drifting that's better than what a community member can do. Because it's like surely after the devs 100% seeing this drift mod, they don't look at it and go, hmm, maybe we actually could improve upon this and do it better in our next game. There's no way the drifting is just as bad or worse in the next Need for Speed. At the end of the day, Unbound has not received as much content as I would have liked to have seen in a year and a half of release and unfortunately I do not think at this point from the year and a half mark to the two year mark that the content's going to get much better. So here's a few things I think they could do to at least keep things going and not have the game just completely fizzle out and turn into nothing. So as I mentioned before I think they most definitely can improve on the ranking system by adding a special car every 50 levels so people actually have a reason to want to grind like I don't care about unlocking cash and it's what? Now, as I was saying, I don't care about unlocking cash or XP for hitting these certain ranks because I can just go and play the game to do that anyway. These ranks really need to give us something that we wouldn't get by normally playing the game. Even though if you just normally play the game, you know, these ranks will give you things, but you know what I mean. Like, I can just go and play a high earning race to get a lot of cash and XP. Like, it doesn't really matter. These ranks need to offer things that actually make them enticing and make people want to play for a longer period of time. And that then benefits everyone because EA is going to have more active players. People are going to be playing for longer so that means there's more you know longer play time and it'll just overall help EA get some actual active players back in this game and revive it a little bit give it a bit of life because I think this game desperately needs that right now but after a year and a half of release what do you guys think about Need for Speed Unbound was there anything I missed on the good and bad side if so let me know in the comment section below oh and don't forget to subscribe if you enjoyed and like the video I'd appreciate that